Notion, I think it's time to say goodbye. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got to say it. Spit words out. So, I'm leaving Notion. I'm not going to be using Notion as my own, like, main application of choice, and here are the reasons why. The speed of the application has slowly been decreasing. I recognize it's probably to do with some of the updates that they're going to be pushing out this year, thinking about the offline mode and the API. I also want to add in there that other applications, cloud-based applications, have also been struggling with speed, ClickUp being one of them, Asana being another, Coda having a couple of hiccups here and there. So it's not Notion specific, so I'm not bashing on Notion at all for that. Backlinks is another thing that inside the note-taking, network, thought, atomic structure, whatever you want to call it in the note-taking space, stupid terminology, use the same words, but backlinking and the ability to quickly link different pages, different notes, again, whatever word you want to use, the ability to link things together quickly just using a couple of brackets is very, very nice, especially when I'm taking lots of notes throughout the day, which Notion, you can do in a relation property, you can use backlinks, there we go, but they are not as functional as the other network thought apps like Roam, Obsidian, Remnote, Logsic, those sort of things. Templates in Notion are amazing and they basically introduce me to things like Text Expander, Auto Hotkey, and all those things you can do to speed up whatever it is that you're doing just to repeat the process. Now, templates inside of Notion was unique at the time of me in like finding templates, but now most applications have templates, some versions of templates, Admittedly, not many of them beat Notion's templates, but most of my use cases for templates were in task and project management, which Notion, yes, you can do for task and project management. It is amazing for it, with, with some limitations when it comes to recurring tasks and weekly calendar views, granted. But the usage I was actually getting out of the Notion templates, I could actually replicate in a lot of other applications that are out there, which over on Twitch, where I'm exploring loads of other apps, I'm finding that most applications give me the functionality I need in the template. No, some of them aren't as advanced as Notions, but I don't need them to be because they're doing what I need in my personal use case. Extending on from what I mentioned about the speed is backups. Now, John, I know you're going to be watching the video. You love backups. John is the Notion nerd. We've, we've done a load of live streams together. And John and a lot of the community that watch the live streams talk about backups all the time. Now, I don't have a local storage backup of most of my notes, tasks, projects, and things like that because they are stored in so many different apps. Having said that though, with everyone pushing with backups and I understand the security issues going around a lot of the cloud-based apps and Notion's export, markdown files, things like that, the, the offline mode essentially, is it has some work to be done. Now this does mean that if I'm going to be using lots of different devices, the app that I am going to use either needs to have the ability to sync to cloud or needs to have that option to go to cloud storage somewhere anyway, whether that's Dropbox, OneDrive or something equivalent. And alongside the cloud storage, so you can go somewhere and see the things, obviously if you're working with other people, so collaborating with a team or clients or anything like that, you need to have your data, whatever you're working in, the docs, the wikis, the databases, the spreadsheets, stuff like that, that needs to be accessible through your team. Like your team needs to have access to that. I don't have a team, I work by myself. I will probably stay working by myself for a while because I like the power and, con no. Um, I, I just prefer working by myself and having the control right now. So for right now, cloud-based collaboration isn't a necessary. So for right now, cloud-based collaboration isn't a necessity for me. Now, calendars, managing your calendar. I've spoken with Scott Friesen about this on the live stream. I've spoken with Carl about this. I've spoken with John about this on stream as well. And everyone kind of has their own way to manage their calendar. However, everyone uses Google Calendar, like everyone. They either use Google Calendar or they use some sort of extension plugin like Woven or something like that. Yes, if you're an Apple user, you may be using Fantastical or something else like that. But essentially, you all we all have our calendar apps that we use that everyone sort of like diverts to. So I was never using Notion as my calendar app. All of my events and my meetings through Calendly were going into my Google Calendar. You could use Calendly, Acuity, whatever scheduling thing you want to have. It was going into my Google Calendar and then it was either being duplicated in Notion or whatever other app. So whether that's ClickUp or Todoist or whatever app it was, 
Google Calendar is my main calendar, and then it was being duplicated through an API, if I could, or through manual duplication. Now, Notion, I wasn't really using it for my calendar, so I'm not going to lose it as my calendar. Whatever app I choose to use in the future, I can just use Google Calendar alongside that. So task management inside of Notion, again, you can do it. Recurring tasks aren't great, so you might need to find another solution for recurring tasks. For me, I found formulas worked, template buttons worked, just having them there as tick boxes also worked. I then had recurring tasks in Todoist, recurring tasks in TickTick, -tick, recurring tasks in ToDo, MeDo, Google Calendar. I was, I was doing loads of things for recurring tasks, and my task list is still something I will go to every single day. And task management, like I mentioned with the templates, is something I was doing with templates. But at the core, my to-do list, I could do it on paper. So it really doesn't matter what application I'm using for my to-do list as long as it has a tick box because ticking it off is so satisfying and it has some sort of template functionality for when I'm doing a video and I want to generate loads of tasks. Quick Capture, on the other hand, is an interesting topic of conversation when it comes to Notion. What I've actually found with Quick Capture with Notion is when I'm on my PC, on my computer, whatever it happens to be, when I'm taking Quick Capture notes, it's very, very easy because I have it up on my second screen. Having said that, if Notion isn't up, then it takes a little bit longer. I'm not saying this is significantly longer, but what I will say is with the note taking of Notion, because of the way the notes are formed in Notion, you have a folder like structure. You need to know either where to put it, you need to have a system in place of how to input it, where to input it, what tags do you need to have on it. If you're using save to Notion, if you're using a web clipper, what bits of data, what bits of metadata you want to attach to something. Now in my note taking system, my quick capture, it's just jot it down and deal with it later because it gets it out of my head saved and sorted, which is what my scratch pad was for inside of Notion. The friction point, small friction point I was having with that is some days I would capture loads and loads of things and I would feel oh, I need to go through those to actually process those notes and sometimes, let's be real, I can't be bothered. So my scratch pad was kind of building up with all of these things and that is never going to go away. It's, it's just not going to go away. It's the way that I work. It's the way that I quick capture things and then process stuff. However, I record most of my quick capture because I like talking. It's easier to talk. I can't spell. If anyone has seen me try and spell on stream, the red line, the red squiggly line is under half of my words. So saying whatever it is I need is so much easier. And I never used Notion for that. I was either using my voice recorder, which is the default Android voice recorder you get on your phone, or I was using something else that was similar. So that whether that was TikTok or whether that was Google or Todoist or whatever it was, I was talking my notes and then grabbing them into Notion. And that's not a feature that Notion is unique to because I can embed any audio clip or just listen back to the audio clip and process it using any application. So again, Notion isn't so a problem that I have, it's just the app that I was using at the time. Now, note-taking, I've got a bit of a confession to make. Note-taking, I, I, I just don't like taking long notes, reading articles. I don't like reading, reading's not fun. I'm an academic, or I was an academic, and the... Oh, oh. Reading articles is just not something I enjoy. I prefer watching videos, listening to podcasts, or anything like that. So note-taking is one of those things that needs to be really, really quick, seamless, easy, and I need to have fun with it in some way. Now, how do you, how do you make something fun? How do you make typing fun? The answer is hotkeys, shortcuts, and other things like that. Notion was the first markdown editor I'd ever seen where you put, push the hash keys in, you put heading three, you push enter, and then it's actually a heading three. That was really cool, it was unique, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, but that's actually not unique. Typora does it, Rome does it, Obsidian does it, loads of other things do it. So it's not actually unique. So the note taking there was like, okay, I could do this elsewhere. So there's nothing there that makes Notion fun. Then I started seeing hotkeys and shortcuts in other applications. Obsidian being one that comes to mind first because Obsidian has loads of shortcut options and you can just bounce around on your keyboard. You don't have to use that mouse thing or well, touchpad. I've got a touchpad because I'm on a laptop and I don't have to use it. And it's so satisfying being able to jump notes, move things around with my hands exactly where they are when I'm typing. Having that functionality, that flexibility to just live on my keyboard is so nice when I'm taking notes because it, it allows one, for me to be quicker with taking notes. Two, it brings a little bit of fun when I'm moving things around. I can, ow, that was my elbow.
It brings a little bit of fun when I'm moving things around because if there's a line in the wrong place, I can just like up, down, up, down, up, down, fiddle around. I can fiddle around whilst thinking, which as you probably can see, I, my, 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 my mind, blah, 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 English. My mind is kind of everywhere. I, I'm not very specific. This is logic. This is the way we do this. No. So I like the ability to just fiddle around and not have to go, okay, where are my hands on my keys now? I don't sit there and go, this is what I'm gonna write. And extending from the note taking out to just general navigation, ClickUp was the first application I found where I was like, hotkeys, I can push H and go to my home. I can push I and go to my inbox. That's so cool. Notion, hotkeys, control one to go to my dashboard and then everything else is clicking on my mouse. Again, I want the keyboard life. I, I'm, I'm lazy, I'm lazy AF. Uh, and I just wanna use my keyboard for navigation. I don't want to have to go up and down. My organization isn't great, hold up a sec. You see this? I've got a keyboard down here because I prefer this to that, but then I've got the pad there. I don't even have a mouse because I don't have any space for a mouse. You see all the wires. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. So I, I, I don't want to be using, I don't want to be using this touchpad. So Notion doesn't really solve the issue of me wanting to jump around all over the place, whether that's going through different windows. Wait, Notion doesn't have different windows. So going through different windows, opening up different side panels, different sidebars, going up and down the pages, skipping or anything like that. And something that I've recently found out because I want to learn how to code because I can review apps, but reviewing apps is great, but you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know how much effort it took for them to build something, and you don't know the limitations of the potential application, recurring tiles in Notion being one of those things. So I want to learn to code, and in my exploration of coding, I found a language called Vim. And Vim is something that is used in code editors, mainly Vim, or you can use it in VS Code as an extension. Now for those that don't care about code, I didn't care about code to start with, you probably have never heard of it. But essentially, it allows you to do all of the navigation stuff that you would want to do, so the backspace, the arrow keys, everything like that, inside your normal keys. So I can go up and down using J and K. I can delete a word by going DW, and I don't have to take my hands off those keys, so I don't have to yeah, sideways all the time, because it's just a pain in the bum. And there are loads of other shortcuts that allow me to speed through things. And finding this language, this editor, made me go, okay, I can be even quicker on the keyboard. So I can have hotkeys, shortcuts, and Vim navigation all in one app, yes please. So that's what I started looking for. And just for clarification, I don't think Vim is allowed inside of Notion, so it's kind of like, eh, but I want it. Before moving into the interest of my Kodi side of different applications, the graph view inside of things like Rome, Obsidian, Remnote, etc., are really, really useful when you have access to a local graph view of whatever it is you're looking at. So what I found in Notion is when I was looking for something that's related, I'd go to the related property and that could get filled up very quickly. So I needed a linked database in my page to see what was going on. And that was just a list of things. Now I can find a list of things in any database or spreadsheet. But the graph view, specifically the local graph view, is really nice in a way that you can just navigate quickly through, bounce around and see what's going on. And in most applications that have a graph view, you can open those up at separate pages. So Obsidian is the application I've currently been using, which I think I will be using in the, in the future. And you can have a local graph view, you can have your page, and then go, boop, I need that one, boop, I need that one, boop, I need that one. Notion you can't do that. Notion, you've got to go, I'm in this page, but I want this page and this page up as well. Let me let me bring up another tab or another window, or I'm just going to bounce backwards and forwards between them. Ah, friction point. And that moves me quite nicely onto code plugins and things like that. At the end of the day, every single application is going to be missing a feature, a function, or something. It's not going to look right for, for everyone. Everyone is going to have an issue with an application because the application isn't built for you. It's built for these types of people. So at the end of the day, the best app you can have for you is the one that you build yourself. But no one's going to build an app themselves because that's loads of effort. So the next best thing is to find an application that gives you the base functionality of what you need, local storage, whatever it happens to be, and then give you the availability to either ask someone to build something like a plugin or an add-on or something like that, or you, me, learn how to actually add on, plug in, do whatever to the app to make it yours. And this is something I've recently been doing with Obsidian. I wanted to learn code. So I decided, right, 
I'm using Obsidian, I'm going to learn CSS. And CSS is essentially a language to make things look pretty. And Notion looks really nice, but their color palette doesn't, doesn't suit me. I prefer more vibrant colors, as you can tell. So I was like, well, how do I change that? Now I could try and change that in Notion's side, but I decided to try it in Obsidian because I kind of understood what was going on there better. Could I do it in both? Probably. Obsidian is the one that I went with. So Notion isn't going anywhere, and I'm still going to be exploring Notion as an application with all the other features that are coming out when they do come out, but I want to explore other applications, see what they can do, see what they offer, and see if I can implement any of those things from other applications, whether that's other features, other concepts, other methods of doing things in whatever my system happens to be. Now, I could work on paper, but apps are more fun. And having fun while you're working is the most important thing for me anyway, because fun first. Now I'm going to leave YouTube to suggest some videos for you because I don't really know what your preferences are.